What's up guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the color system inside of automatic.css, how powerful it is with automatically generated shades um, and other color variants. We're gonna take a look at how to set up that system in the very beginning. We're gonna take a look at uh, background overlays, background color classes, text classes, buttons, and all sorts of cool stuff that have to do with color so that you can see how powerful this system is inside of Automatic. Dot CSS. So let's go ahead and jump over to the sandbox site and let's get to work. I've got a little hero section here that we're going to quickly style up and then I'm going to show you exactly how the color system works and behaves uh, from a global level. This is, uh, this is really, really powerful stuff. I think it's going to help you a lot. It's going to speed up your workflow. You're going to love it. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, in this section, let's just center everything real quick. Um, let's also make this section bigger. I want a lot more responsive padding inside of this section. So I'm going to use a pad section class. We're going to go XXL. I just want this hero section to be in your face. We're also going to make all the text in this section white. White is one of those without setting up automatic at all. You have text white, text black, and a bunch of gray shades automatically available to you uh, at all times. So if you want text to be white, it's as easy as going text white, okay? Um, we're also going to put a little owl spacing here uh, to space everything out kind of evenly. Actually, I want to do owl S on that. So it's not quite so dramatic. Perfect. Um, now I'm going to style these buttons. And all I have to do really is put a button class on them. So BTN and BTN. Um, and so... In the automatic system, you have four different colors. You have primary, you have secondary, you have accent, and you have base. Uh, when the plugin is available, by the way, you're gonna be able to automatically generate more colors if you need more colors. But for right now, we have these four brand colors. This button automatically inherits my primary color, which is the action color for the website. It automatically puts in a hover variant as well. So your hovers are already set on your button class by default. That's very, very cool, very powerful, makes things a lot faster for you. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is darken that background with a background overlay. Um, and this is uh, you know, hard to do with a class in Oxygen. You actually have to do this, like you can't just create a custom class and set a background overlay, it's not gonna work. Um, but in automatic.css, I've gotten around that by assigning, making the, the overlay classes powerful enough to where they actually use a pseudo element to create these overlays. So all I have to do is type in overlay, and I'm gonna have overlays of all of my colors, all of my brand colors, as well as all of the opacity variants. All right, so I can do an overlay primary trans 60, which is 60% transparency of my primary color. Or what I really wanna do here is the base, which is a darker color. So I'm gonna do overlay base trans 60, and you're gonna see that it automatically darkens on my hero section. And I'm not stuck doing these overlays at the uh, ID level. I can still use all of my utility classes with my background overlays, which is very, very powerful. So my hero section is looking really good. We can see how all of that stuff worked. If I want a little contrast here with my button, I can always just do a button and then I can just do a different um, uh, thing. So I can do like, you can do button secondary, right? And see how that looks. So now you kind of have an alt button inside there. Um, and also, if you're if you're wondering how I got these two buttons side by side, that was pretty easy. I'll just uh, go ahead and take those classes off. So that's how it would be by default. But if you use the flex row, and then you use the gap S, there you go. You have your side by side buttons. You can even change how that behaves on uh, mobile devices. Okay, cool. So that we're going to call uh, done. Now, you could also make this uh, white if you wanted to. So we can do button white. And we can do text base ultra dark on that. And that will give me that kind of alternate button as well. Um, and it still does the primary hover, uh, but all this stuff is editable as well. Um, you can make your own custom alt button if you don't wanna just sit here and use utility classes for everything. I'm gonna take a couple of those off. All right, so let's get down here and just figure out real quick like how this color system works. Um, let's do an owl. S class on this, Let's kind of give some spacing to everything. And on this, we'll do a margin bottom. So we can move this grid a little bit further away. 
Um, so here's the primary color. So we have background classes for all of your colors and all of the, the uh, generated shades. So I'm gonna do BG, and this says this is a primary color box. So I'm gonna do primary. And then what's really cool about this is I can make the text kind of match really well. So I can go text and we can do primary dark. And that's gonna give me a dark version of that text. If that's not quite dark enough for you or there's not enough contrast, you can always do text, um, ultra, uh, sorry, primary ultra dark. Boom, all right, so that's a very dark version, but it's not black, it's not like you're throwing black on there. You're throwing the, the primary color, just a very dark version of it. So it actually blends and plays quite nicely. Um, so that's our primary color. Now let's take a look at all of the different generated options that we have. Again, you don't have to set these up in automatic.css. It's all automatically done for you. So on this one, I'm gonna do BG primary ultra light, just like it says there. So primary ultra light, and then I'm gonna do primary light. And this, you're gonna see the true power of this when we need to make a global adjustment. And by the way, I do wanna, uh, this is an automatic grid, by the way. Actually, it's not auto. Let's do grid auto four. So it's automatic. We don't have to worry about breakpoints or anything. And then let's put a gap on here of M. Okay, so that's looking much better. Cool. All right, so we've got our primary color up there. We've got all of our generated shades. Um, and remember, this is primary ultra dark. I can't really read that text. If I wanted to text primary and you just go the opposite. So primary ultra light gives us the ultra light text. Um, so that's very cool, very powerful. Now the client is like, Hey, you know, so yeah, we, we changed up our primary color a little bit. Is that going to be a problem? And, and think like you've used these you know, variants all across the site. You've used their ultra light. You've used the light variants. You've used, you know, ultra dark on text. You've used, maybe the complementary color was used somewhere. Um, but definitely the transparencies were used somewhere. And now the client wants to change the primary color. Um, if you had set all this stuff up manually, you would be now uh, changing all of this stuff manually. But in automatic.css, it's literally one change. So what I'm gonna do is go to style sheets. And I'm gonna go to the VARS style sheet. And when the plugin is all created and ready to go, this is all gonna be done in a plugin dashboard. But for right now, you just have to open a style sheet and we've defined everything in HSL values. That's where a lot of the power of the system comes from. And you're gonna see the primary color HSL values are right here. So what I'm gonna do is choose a new primary color. So I'm gonna go over to coolers here. Uh, which is a really awesome color website that I use a lot and that I love. I'm just going to hit start the generator and this will generate color palettes for you, right? Um, and you can see that maybe we want this to be our new primary color. So it's not like super far off from what we have, but it is definitely different. So what I'm going to do is select that color. I'm going to grab the hex code because I don't think this, oh, it does generate HSLs for us. So that's perfect. Um, but if it didn't, if you just have hex codes, you can actually just go to Google, type in your hex code, and it'll give you the HSL value right there. And you just type that into the, the style sheet. But look, it, it did it here. So 358, 65, and 55. 358, 65, and 55. 358, 65, and 55. You guys see that all changing dynamically over there as we went? Like that's the power of the system. So I have a new complementary color. I have new shades automatically generated. Anywhere this stuff has been used, it's going to change for you. Look, that button has now changed to the new primary color. If I change the base color, like let's go back to that palette. Maybe we want this as the base. That's like a darker blue kind of base. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the HSL values here, 216, 49, and 22, 216, 49, and 22. Where'd my style sheet go? 216, 49, and 22. So now I have a brand new base color. It's changed all my overlays. I haven't used that base color anywhere else on, on this page, but you can definitely see uh, that we are like, you know, seeing the full power of the automatic.css color system here. Um, and then if I changed, obviously this was using the secondary color. So if I wanted to go and change that, we could change that just as easy. 
Uh, I do want to show you as well, if you're not using background classes, uh, like let's go here to this primary, and I'm just going to take off the BG primary class. And let's say I wanted a custom class, like custom background, okay? Like that. You can always hook in with variables. So very, uh, very uh, var, <laughs> can't talk, primary, still gets me that background color. So I'm, I'm hooking into the automatic color system, but I'm assigning this now to a custom class. Uh, so, you know, you've seen that in, in the other videos that I've done. I'll just actually just leave that super, super powerful. You can do that pretty much on anything. Anything that accepts a color inside of oxygen, you can use a variable to hook into the automatic.css color system. So this is how colors work in oxygen. The setup for it is so simple. You saw me change it, but right when you install the system, all you do is set up your values here and you are ready to rock and roll. Uh, and if anything needs to change or update in the future, your entire site is pretty much protected from breaking because everywhere you've used this system is going to adjust when a new color is brought in, like a, or a color change is made. And like I said, yeah, it's a little messy that you have to do it in the style sheet right now. The plugin is in development. As soon as the plugin is ready, uh, version like 1.1 will have a dashboard and we'll be able to just hook in through the dashboard. You won't have to ever touch a style sheet, but just wanted to show you the color system and how powerful it is and get your thoughts and feedback. Hit like, hit subscribe, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. That's it. I'll be back. Peace.